summer. So uh, yeah, when I was nine years old, summer of 2005, July 23rd, I remember the day. Um, my mom was struck by a semi truck while waiting outside of her car for assistance. And yeah, my uh, older sister that took care of us was also hit. But after my mom passed away, my older sister got custody of me and my other three sisters. Uh, uh, wasn't the best lifestyle for me that I wanted, you know, that I pictured my life going. Especially after my mom passed away. So I remember this one time. It's nothing against <laughs> my older sister or her husband, but I remember this one time when we were starving, literally begging for something to eat for a couple of days, you know, and I was in my room right next door to my sister's room and I could smell some Taco Bell. And these dudes really just wanted some Taco Bell and locked their doors and eating it without us. So that was the last straw for me. I had to go to Dollar General, uh, Family Tree, Savers Mart to go steal food for my family and stuff. And for me, I stole food all the time for me, you know, because I had to eat something. And so I met Will and we started hanging out a little bit and uh, I come to find that he goes to this church called Central Baptist Church. So I walked there, hang out with Will at the Sunday school and after his uh, mom invites me to something called D Now Weekend. This costs like 110 bucks so I'm grateful. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm excited for it. And so ever since then, like, I always hung out with him, you know. Ever since that day at church, I never left this family's house. I never. Well, I did have a vision, and that started with, um, you know, telling my story on the way down here, and conversating with Jan a little bit, eating some of this food. I'm starving. Are you hungry? Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, dig in. Three. Well, real quick, I just gotta let you guys know that this family right here has done so much for me, and I wouldn't be where I am. So that much said, I love them to death. You know, I applied for uh, to be a firefighter like six months ago, and I just got an email back to take the test. So uh, I got scheduled to take a test next Thursday. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't get the study guide and everything. You know, I went to ICU you now two or three years before you fall in one class. Change is always hard, and I know it was stressful for Brian. Grandmother was still living for a little while, and he he was staying with his grandmother. But then she passed not long at all after Brian came into our life. Everything's a game, everything's playful, everything's an adventure, everything's funny, everything's a joke. Super playful. Um, so that was just real different. We're all kind of way too serious. There was a lot more laughter. Lots of jokes. I used to be worse, but they made me better. In return, uh, I helped me joke a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> but then, we're, then our drugs get me. Yeah. And then it's like. And I shut down. <laughs> like, yeah, that was that was too far. That was too much. <laughs> too much. Too much. Yeah. We go we go straight to too much. A lot. <laughs> I think it was the summer after you and Will finished seventh grade. I remember this. You just didn't go home the whole summer. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we all talked about it. We talked about it with the kids, too. Yeah. And we all decided that if you wanted to stay, we wanted you to stay. And this right here is my, definitely doesn't look like my old bedroom. The bed is twice the size of, as it used to be. This is where we chill the most, usually. We have like a, um, uh ottoman right here. We just kick it, you know, play some 2K. Um, yeah, that's where we saw that one deer that time. We heard Lola barking. We saw that deer out there, like in the middle of the pond and everything. If this was a fraternity house, it's the living room for the guys. Um, I, but yeah, I remember this one time for about a two month period, my dad would wake us up and before school make us work out, do the bird max somewhere around here, you know. And seriously, he is my biggest inspiration. He cares so much, you know. I'm fortunate to live, <laughs> live where I did for about six years, eight years, and not be in a hood. Well, what happens when you're raising teenagers is, is you know, it, it can be pretty traumatic. You know, watching them try everything and make all the mistakes that we've all made before. There's so much knowledge that they try to pass down to me, but I didn't like believe them when they said this is going to help you out. 
and that's all they were ever trying to do, as you can tell. You know, I didn't turn out too bad. Not too bad. Basically, this is Tracy. Because he told you about, um, he, he's a legend in BPA. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, I was a terrible kid. No, you weren't a terrible kid. But the, the BPA is an elementary school. And he was at um, Brian at Division I Performing Arts. I'm, I'm not kidding. I went to the office every single day. And they made up this, this system for recess, detention basically. It's called the cones. The walking the cones. Orange cones. The whole recess. Walk. And as soon as I left BPA, they got rid of them. I said we go check out BPA right now and see what they got to say about me. You were a lot of fun. That's you were a good. class clown. You wanted everybody to laugh. And Somewhere in there. You were a great student. You made excellent grades. And of course, at the end of the year that I had you, is the year you lost your mama. Yeah. And we were worried because I knew you were in that position of it could go either way. You know, you had a lot of odds stacked against you. We all loved you and we just wanted to wrap our arms around you and make sure that you were going to be okay. All right. So. I mean, I cried every day, but I ended and up all right. You did. Part, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And I talked with Miss Latoya and some others, and I want you to know you were one of those students for me. You know, in our teaching careers, we all have certain students that really touch our hearts or that keep us going or remind us why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And I've told many people that you were that student for me because you're one of my first. They kept me alive when I know I was back here. She said it's turning her off. Oh, I remember like sitting in here waiting for a counselor to talk to me after I get in trouble because I would always get in trouble every single day. And I'll come back here to this part. Oh my god. Yeah. Alright, come on. Alright. There we go. Oh yeah, I'm gonna wear this when I train for sure. I don't want you to mess up that good brain you got. Good brain, good smile, I, I need it both. <laughs> she is still <laughs> aside. I said, are you having fun getting to see everybody? You know, it's uh, a trip down memory lane for sure, yes. Yeah, okay, where are you now? I'm in Little Rock, only two hours away. Little Rock? Yes. Okay. Well, you're not too far away. Right? It's good to talk to you, Brian. All right, Seriously, call me. Hey, Brian so I've been been knowing Brian since he was a second grader. I'm just so proud of this kid. Oh my goodness, so proud. We knew from the get go something was within him to do great. He's not a troublemaker. I would say like class clown. You're like the example kid for us, but you're like the success story. You All right, we're gonna yeah. check out one of my actually my favorite teacher I've ever had, Miss Ferris. So yeah. 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 Oh my gosh! It's like seeing it's like seeing your son. Yeah, right. Come on. Having you as a student was a great experience. It made me learn a lot about myself. You were a challenge in a lot of ways because I don't think you were real happy with yourself. And this was right after my mom died too. And so you were kind of in a turmoil, torn up inside. Right. You were one of the most fantastic writers I've ever had. Gradually. He kind of came to trust me. I was hard on you. That's what I was going to say. Real hard on you. About it. You, know, nope. you weren't about that. No. Nope. Because <laughs> I felt like that I needed you to understand that I I couldn't understand how you felt because I'd never been through it. But that I wanted you to know that somebody loved you and was concerned for you and knew that you could be your best, but you had to believe it too. And I got to see the things that you accomplished, which is what I told you all along. But I just, I, I, I don't know that I ever said it to you, but I tried to show you to have faith in yourself. And to, to even when you were down on yourself and things looked really rough, that you could pull yourself out of it. But it was going to take work. You're my favorite teacher out of everybody, like, no doubt about it. I would never Do you know how much that means to me? Because, more than you would ever know. But when it's a kid that you love, and one that you have watched grow, and one that you truly, truly care about, for them to say that back to you, if nothing else, I just want you to be a better person when you leave me. You're just, you're one of those kids. You know, I think about it, 40 years of teaching, all the kids I've had, especially after we've, you know, traded classes and everything, Brian, you will never, you are in my heart, and you will always be in my heart. Thank you. Can we get a group picture right fast? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Alright, you got it. I'm gonna post it to Facebook, so she's in this. I will. Yeah. Alright. I have like 10 minutes to catch up, and I'm still very tall. Right. Right. I'm still the shortest one in the whole group. Wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Thankfully, they asked me to you know, be in their family. I don't know what they saw in me, but they saw something. You asked me what it was like for us. It was, a, it was a dream. It was a dream. Uh, I started training with Mike Wessel my senior year, at the end of my senior year of wrestling in uh, 2015. Alright, and my brother was training with him at first. So I went in there and basically, I don't know, piggybacked off my brother's classes, his privates. And Mike didn't mind it at all. He didn't say anything about it. Alright, so I went to Mike Wessel's gym and it was everything that I wanted, seriously, as far as an MMA fighter. He, uh, he was a real deal. I saw pictures of him being in the UFC. I saw a picture of him and Matt and Roley in the octagon. And it's like, that's where I want to be. And I knew exactly that. I'm, I'm, I'm at the right place. A couple years ago, I met Brian. He uh, he came into class and everything else, and he, he was interested in MMA, and he was a wrestler. No, he was good. You know, I just seen his raw talent. It was like everything I taught him, and you could see how his footwork and how everything, it was just, it was all so, it was primal, but it was instinctive. He had it. He had that it. And there's such a difference in size in us. So, like, I only know big man jiu-jitsu. And the things that he needed to learn, like, the footwork that guy could teach him, the, the switches in his feet and how, how to throw the punches. My BJJ was not there. And I also didn't have the training partners. And that's very different to have a kid that's, you know, 150 pounds when I walk around at 280. Well, where I came from is, you know, is my home school, and I, I love those guys. It's, you know, it's it's the West Side in uh, in, uh, in Little Rock, Arkansas. Matt and Roy, Matt Hamilton and Roy Delgado. You know, I called them up, dude. I was like, you gotta, I gotta have him come down. I said, you have got to see what he does. And I said, he doesn't know anything. He's green. He's primal. He's he, but he has what I say is it. He has the potential to be it. But when I started training with Mike Wessel full time, it wasn't until after a semester at this uh, college called Lincoln. And college wasn't for me. And I started living with some friends that were, for the direction that I was heading, weren't the best influences. Heading the complete wrong direction. I had Mike Wessel immediately he was like, hey, Brian, you gotta stop playing that Nintendo. You gotta get out of that. You gotta get out of that house. Come live with me. <laughs> he calls. He calls Xbox Nintendo. And immediately, I accept the offer because I had hit rock bottom. So I lived with Mike Wessel, and every single day he made a he made a whole schedule for me. Five o'clock, I was up. <laughs> Five o'clock, I was up getting a workout. About seven o'clock, I would do some mess with him. Eight o'clock, I would get out of the gym, go to the sauna, hit hot yoga, a couple of classes. Then I was taking a break for a little bit. I came back to the gym at 12, did some more work, took a little break, came back at 3 until at night around 7 o'clock. That was seriously every single day for about six months straight. All right, And it got to the point to where Mike was like, you know what? I literally can't coach anything anymore. I've got to say to, to my coaches in Little Rock. Mike Wessel, one of our former fighters, called me up. He's like, man, I need to send a guy down here. I've got a kid. Hey, man, he, this kid's as athletic as Bo Jackson. You know, he's super athletic. And, and he listens. Well, bring him down. Let's let's see what he's got. You know, and uh, and so he went down there a couple times. And, and you know, I, I, was, I was glad to see him move full time down to Little Rock. You know, to get his now, he's working at you know West Side and teaching class. It just wasn't enough, so I moved down and I lived in the gym for about six more months. There's a certain number of people that have walked through these doors, and I went, and that guy can make it to the UFC. That guy can. And so far, everyone I've said that about has made it to the UFC. But you know, he's on his way. My expectations, you know. It's his all to lose. He's, he, he can he can be as great as he wants. A lot of it's figuring it out for yourself and you're on your own because you know there's a lot of days that you don't have training partners, you don't have certain things, that you don't have certain things. I truly think it's his to lose. Hell, if he gets to where he's working real hard, he will be untouchable. You know, but it, 
it's it's hard to develop that sense of urgency with somebody that's so gifted. He's got one of the best BJJ instructors in the U.S., if not the world, and he's got one of the best, best minds as far as MMA goes with Matt Hamilton. <laughs> that's, I don't want to get, because you know, here's the thing, you know, this life's funny, it, it can turn on a whim and you never will have, I just hope he is able to live up to the potential that he has. I mean, you know, that's one of the things I talk to with Brian all the time. If you want it half as bad as I want it for you, then you're good, because I want it for you bad. I just see that potential. And I'm not stopping, I've been at this for three years straight, every single day. Well, I see that the only way, the only way I see this hitting up is with that UFC belt on my waist. That's the only way, all right? I'm on a roll. And I know for a fact this is what my life is meant to be. I, it's like my whole life's been lined up for fighting. I am built for fighting.